Granny? Well, hello there, Noah. Uh, what have you been up to today? Uh, not much. There doesn't seem to be a whole lot to do anymore. We've put all of our scripts in order and put them in a, a sturdy plastic box. We checked over all of our costumes and put them where the mice can't get to them. And we cataloged and rolled up all of our backdrops and put them in a metal box. Yes, I guess we are all ready to be put back into service. Yeah, the only problem used to be making sure that the mice kept out of our stuff. And since we've got our stuff all pretty well sealed up, it's a lot easier. It's more fun to play with the mice than to battle with them. <laughs> I see the young mice have invented some new games. Yeah, but my friend Eek, he's nearly grown up now, and he's started helping to find food for all the mice instead of playing. And since I'm just a little boy puppet, I don't see much of him anymore. Uh, so you uh, feel like you've been left behind. And because you were created as a little boy puppet, you can never grow up? Well, just because you were created to look like a boy and play the part of a boy doesn't mean you can't change inside. You should continually grow and become a better puppet. We all should. Yeah, I see what you mean, Granny, and I try, since my baptism especially, but it never seems to work for me. I just can't seem to do any better than I've always done. Well, we believers grow and change after our baptism through the power of the Holy Spirit. I've heard of the Holy Spirit, but I don't know much about him. Neither did the apostles and the early church Christians. Humans have been trying to explain him for centuries, so I don't know if I can, but I'll try. You know that humans are created in God's image. Sure, the book of Genesis says that. One of the ways that humans are like him is that they have three parts. The body, which is where the soul and spirit live. Souls, which are like who they are, you know, like thoughts and feelings and character. And their spirits, which is the power that keeps them alive and doing. God also has three parts. God the Father, who is like the soul of God the Son, who is the body of God, and the Holy Spirit, who is the power of God on earth to do his will. God's three parts can exist separately all the time, but humans' parts separate only when they leave this earth, when they die. Hmm. Well, that's a pretty good way to explain it. I can see it's kind of hard to explain. So, when Jesus left this earth, he did not leave those who loved and followed him, Without help, ten days after he ascended to heaven, the Holy Spirit introduced himself to them in a very spectacular way. Cool. It was on the day of Pentecost. Um, that's a harvest festival, which was and is celebrated by Israel 50 days after the Passover. Pentecost means 50 days, and it's also called the Festival of Weeks. Um, is it a little bit like our Thanksgiving? Yes, like that. More or less. After Jesus went to heaven, they all went back to Jerusalem and stayed together praying and waiting for the power that Jesus had promised. Suddenly, on the day of Pentecost, there came a sound from heaven like a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were. They saw what looked like Tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them, and they were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit enabled them. Whoa! When people heard the noise of the wind and the commotion, the cr a crowd formed, wondering what was going on, because each of them were hearing the language of him or her's own country. Oh, what languages were those? Remember, this was an important holiday, so there were Jews from many nations in Jerusalem. There were Parthians and Medes and Elamites, and people from Mesopotamia, Judah, Cappadocia, Pontus, Asia, Phrygia, Pam Pamphla, Egypt, Libya, uh, Cyrene, Rome, Crete, and Arabia, and more. They were amazed and perplexed. 
Some ask, what does this mean? Others said, they've had too much wine. Oh, but that wouldn't explain what was happening at all. No, it wouldn't. Peter stood up and began to speak to the crowd. Peter? But uh, Peter was impulsive and unpredictable and more of a man of action, not so much of words. Are you sure it wasn't John or James? Nope, Peter. He quoted Old Testament prophecies that showed how they were fulfilled in Jesus, and he proved to them that Jesus was the Messiah, and then he said, Let the house of Israel know that God has made this same Jesus, whom you crucified, both Lord and Christ. Yikes! That's really laying it out there. And when the people heard this, the Bible says they were cut to the heart, and they cried out to Peter and to the other disciples, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Well, well that really had to be terrifying to, to realize that you've killed the long-awaited Savior. Oh, I'm sure it was. Peter answered, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the forgiveness of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. He kept on preaching, and by the end of the day, there were 3,000 Jews who had become believers and been baptized. It was the beginning of the church. Peter did that? He certainly did. The Holy Spirit changed him. He became one of the most powerful leaders of the church, and wrote two books in the New Testament. Actually, the Spirit changed all of them because, before Pentecost, the believers had been living behind locked doors, afraid of Jewish leaders and Romans. After that day, they boldly proclaimed the good news of Jesus to everyone who would listen. They carried out our uh, Jesus' great commission. Wow! Well, Granny, the Holy Spirit changed them a whole lot, but but what happened on that day, on Pentecost, that's never happened to me, nor to me or to most humans. The Holy Spirit comes to each of us however he knows is best. It's his quiet, powerful presence throughout our lives, in good times and in bad, that really matters. He wants to make us more like Jesus every day. And he will, if we let him. So, if I want to grow to be a better puppet, I ask God for his help and submit to his will, and his spirit will move in me, helping me to grow in my faith and in my Christian life. The Holy Spirit will also guide and comfort us in every situation. Well, that's wonderful, Granny. Exactly what I need. Thank you for telling me about him. Be like Jesus, this my song, in the home and in the throng. Be like Jesus all day long. I would be like Jesus.